Me and my buddy, we make it all of this money. Yeah, I know it's rude to be bragging. They never catching the slacking. Me and my buddy, we working hard for this money. You know I've been in my bag, buddy. I got it like that. Yeah. Me and my boy gon' fly to the top. Sidekick game like Calvin and Hobbes. Batman and Bruce. Y'all know me, I'm down for the cost. Y'all know us. Guys, this is the biggest merch drop of the year that I've ever had before for multiple different reasons. And number one, it's that I'm giving away the Rolex that I'm wearing right now. It's not just any other random Rolex that you can find. It's actually a very meaningful one that I've gotten when I first started transitioning from playing 1-2 to 2-5 after winning my bracelet. I kind of just bought this for myself and I didn't really tell anyone about it. And I got it engraved with the R logo to commensurate the success I had very early on around like 2020, right after COVID. And here coming full circle, I thought it was time to give it away to one of you guys. Throughout the past four or five years of this poker journey, everything has been displayed on the poker channel and I appreciate all the support and I figured now, uh, since I've been playing a lot bigger and I recently wore this on a Hustler live stream and won like a massive session, figured it's time to give it to one of you guys that bought this merch, mainly because of this hoodie that I'm wearing right now. I've always wanted to have a merch and hoodie design that kind of talked about like the past. It's kind of more vintage style and to establish in 2019, that's you know when the channel was created from Boston, Massachusetts, that's where I'm from. The one lucky person that purchases the merch drop is going to be interested in the giveaway to win this Rolex here and uh, want to signify it with something that's kind of more throwback with this merch. Second hoodie in design that I'm really excited about is this Luck Dice. Everyone loves the Luck Box, but this is a whole brand new design and the first time I wore this, I won the Montreal Playground uh, tournament that you guys, that video you're gonna, actually gonna see in a little bit, but not in this one. Anyways, and then this last one, it's gonna be the last creation of the Luck Box. Uh, it's with a partnership with WPT Global, so we've got the patch on the right side and then the R logo on the left sleeve and then the red, white, and blue Luck Box. It's gonna be the complete last design of Luck Box. I feel like I've released a lot of different variations of the Luck Box design, and this is probably gonna be the very last one. And uh, last thing, car protectors. Everyone wants them, we've brought them back, and we got some limited edition hats here. So these five designs you're gonna see is open for a very limited time, and they have limited quantity as well, and if you purchase any of these, you're able to win this special Rolex I have on my watch. I can't wait to give it to one of you guys here that watch the videos. I wouldn't be here without your support, and it really means a lot that you guys watch these videos, and I can sell merch, and I always love seeing the merch being rocked in your local card room. So I'm really looking forward to releasing this, and the merch drop is live right now for a very limited time on rampagepokerstore.com. Also, everything will be shipped before Christmas, so if you wanna do some sort of like Christmas gift, it'll be perfect for that. Anyways, we're on to this Hustler session where, actually, I actually just talked about it. I wear the Rolex and I wear this hoodie. And uh, wish us luck, try to sun run another lovely session at Hustler, but check out the drop, it's live for a limited time, rampagepokerstore.com, appreciate all the support. Literally five minutes into the stream, fireworks start off immediately. I pick up pocket kings. I raise things up to $200 with a premium. I get a call from an early position player. Then Andy decides to raise things up to $1,000. Music to my ears. And then action city here because Steiner raises it up again, bumping it up to $3,500. And action folds to me. I'll be honest, at this point, when Steiner, out of all people, is going to raise, uh, I don't love this situation. Because I've played with Steiner once in the past, and it doesn't seem like he was much of a gambler, and definitely on the nitty side. But looking at his stack with only about $20,000, I guess I can commit stacks here and gamble myself. It's weird to say you're gambling with Pocket Kings, but that's how it feels like. It's early in the stream. If I lose 20K to start, then it won't be the end of the world with plenty of time to make it back. I raise again to 8,000. Folds quickly back to Steiner. He goes all in. Yeah, I didn't raise to 8,000 to fold for only 12,000 more, so I call. We decide to run it once, and he shows me the bad news as I suspected. He has Pocket Aces. Not going to be the hand I wanted to run into, but we see a flop, which comes a whole lot of nothing for me, but turn a king. Oh man, massive suck out to seal the deal in this $40,000 pot. This is a wonderfully hot start to the stream. If I do say so myself here, starting off with a 20 K upswing, big shout out to the people who bought 10% of today's action on state Kings. This one is for you. 
There's a lot more blood to come later in the session as well. So just strap in. Sucking out kings versus aces is only the beginning. About an hour later, this next hand starts off with a little bit of a straddle war, if you say so myself. Nick straddles to 100. I decide to make it 200 because Tyler has been basically been first to act to my right the entire game. Anyways, Nick decides to put on the $400 straddle and I hit my internal limit and make it 800. Luckily for me, this was also Nick's cap and he surrenders on the straddle war. So I already win uh, part one of this hand. So I put off the $800 straddle on a very normal 2550 game turns into a 2550 800 for just this one hand. Anyways, brown baller starts off with a call of 800 and Nick wishes he straddled to 800 now because he raises things up to 3500 and I somehow peel pocket jacks and I wish he did put on that $1,600 straddle because how lucky am I up against Nick's raise I bump it up to a bigger size to 11,000 and we got to pause the raw footage because everything happens so fast here brown baller folds nick snap announces all in about sixty thousand dollars and a nice snap call with the premium hand because well i'm never going to be folding uh pocket jacks here in this configuration now, even though it's a pretty big jam uh, considering the straddle it's not very big so we're gonna one time in this massive pot here over a hundred and ten thousand dollar pot with pocket jacks and nick needs an ace and somehow I find the hold here it's starting to feel like a tournament, winning back-to-back all-ins and double-ups, basically. Winning the 20%er with kings, and then basically winning a flip with jacks. Feeling pretty lucky right now. What an incredible start to the session. All right, things are going to get a little tame here. Come back to Earth with some more realistic hands. Steven raises to 150. I'm in a mood to play big pots because, well, I've only played big pots and I've won both. So I raise it up to $600 with this hand here and Steven makes the call. Going to a flop of King King Deuce, he checks over to me here and I fire a very small bet of 300, just trying to win this one, please. And he ends up making the call, even though I really, really don't love that sitting with just Jack High. Going to a turn, which is the four of spades, Steven now checks over to me and I decided to just chill out here, okay? I feel like I've been amping up the aggression and putting a lot of money in the middle and uh, this time I'm going to check this back and chill. I have such a bad hand and I want to see what happens on the river which is the eight of hearts. This card doesn't change a whole lot and Steven checks once again and now well I just can't help myself to be honest with you. Now after seeing Steven check Jack High is clearly not going to be good here and I just sense some weakness. I don't think Steven's going to have much, many trips here considering he checked twice on the turn and river so I'm going to hope for the best and that he can fold. I don't know what he what i wanted to fold an ace high a small pair i'm not really sure to be honest but i decided to go blast off 2400 into the middle and steven doesn't snap fold which isn't very good but he doesn't snap call which is much better anyways he actually thinks about it for a very long long while here contemplating a hero call with queen high honestly gotta give my props to him it's pretty impressive to still be hanging on for this long with just queen high if only he knew this was a very good read and a correct one but luckily he finally folds and after some really good instincts i'm sure he must have thought i was bluffing somehow because if he calls me with queen high here uh, my mind is blown but happy to win this one nice to bluff him off of a better hand i guess i got really lucky he didn't have ace high because i'm sure if he tanked this long with queen high he probably would have called with an ace Moving along here, still three for three in these big pots. I pick up pocket eights and raise it up to 700. We get Sashimi and Nick to call out of position with the $200 straddle on. So we're going to go three ways to a flop of ace, eight, four, two spades, a set, baby. If only things weren't going hot already for me. It's just always nice picking up a set on an ace high board. Action checks it over to me. I have a very strong hand, of course, and I throw out $1,500 and, well, both call. Yep, just my day, isn't it? I get action. Both players are in here. And we're going to see a turn, which is the nine of diamonds. Brings in two flush draws. Action checks to me once again. And I'm going to hope to get some more value. And I size up to 6,000 here, bumping things up. Hoping to get value from flush draws. Hoping to get value from an ace. Sashimi ends up getting out of the way with an ace, which is really impressive of her. But then Mr. Airball comes along with his, well, airball of a hand, his straight draw. We're going to go to a river. I'm praying my opponent has an ace. And even more so when the river is the ace. Another ace 
fooling me up and basically securing myself so much money if my opponent has an ace in this spot. So I think it's a perfect card to blast off and get paid by trips. But before I can even bet, Nick just open mucks? He folds? Come on, man. Either his reads are spot on or he literally had nothing. Um, and that's what it seemed like, literally nothing. So at least I get to win the pot, but I don't even get a chance to get any value and bet here with the full house. Pretty funny situation to go on. So after going four for four with big hands, you'd think the heater would end eventually, right? Anyways, there's a straddle to 100. A few players call 100 and I bump things up to 600 with king 10 of diamonds. Brown baller ends up re-raising me to 2200. Everyone folds back to me. Course not going to be letting go. I call and see a flop out of position, which comes 10 6 deuce. Well, this is a pretty damn good flop for King 10, all things considered. I check it over to him and he fires out 3,500. We've got a pretty big pot brewing here. It seems like not going to be going away, going to be hard for me to fold in a lot of runouts. So happy to make the call. We see a turn which is a nine. Now, it's a little tricky because the board seems a lot more connected and one that should favor me. So I'm going to play and flow and check. I'm a little bit suspicious of how good his holdings are if he bets here. And I'm thinking it's actually quite scary for him to keep blasting off in this situation where I think I have the advantage. Anyways, he thinks about it for a while and does ultimately throw out a chunky bet of $10,000. And after all my thoughts here, before he made the decision, I just stick to my guts and fold. Luckily, the stand-up game is on anyway, so he has to show anyways. And he shows me 9-5. Very, very bad news. I guess I, I don't know what I'm doing. Um, all of my thoughts, all of my lines of thinking leads me to making the wrong decision. Should have just called because I had top pair. Would have been able to make more money here, but I guess well played by my opponent. I made quite a bad fold, and I'm finally going to lose a hand on the session, but I could have made a lot of money here as he bet 10k on the turn. The very next shuffle we get involved, I'm in the small blind with pocket 10s and Nick straddles in the cutoff. I decided to limp here in the small blind. I don't really know how, well, how to play these spots here, to be honest, but a few more limps over to Nick, and he announces tax, a raise of $500, but... Little does he know, I have a very strong hand myself. I increase the size of his tax now to 5,000. Very big tax increase. Everyone folds back to Nick, and he is never afraid, never scared money, and calls. So off to a flop we go, which comes 334 rainbow. Well, I have an overpair, and I don't think Nick's going to have many threes, but how? How? What, what do I know? Nick can literally have any card in the deck. Anyways, I decided to make a half pot bet of 5,000. Betting 5k in here is, once again, not very scary to Nick, because then he ends up raising me to 12,000. Pretty small raise here in position, and looking at a stack of about 60,000, give or take, from my perspective... I, I'm a little confused on what I want to do. I'm at a position with a very vulnerable hand that I think right now actually would just love to win the pot, to be honest. Whether I get to win the pot or get called and win the pot um, makes no difference to me because there's so much in the middle and I think I just want to win here. So I decided to just shove. Um, I can get, I guess, like hands like two over cards to fold. I can get some straight draws to fold. I can get some backdoor stuff to fold. Honestly, like I said, I'm, I'm happy with just winning right now. I obviously get snapped off and lose the maximum versus three, but maybe I can also win the maximum against pocket nines or eights or something. So who knows? In game and in this specific situation, though, you see Nick has the hand right now that I would love to fold because he has on screen 31%. And I'm honestly, like I said, content with winning this pot. But Nick goes into the tank for forever here and he ends up folding, which is a very, very good result to me. He didn't call with an ace and a gut shot straight draw. Anyways, Nick ends up rabbit hunting and we see a river ace. And now that I'm doing this commentary, I am very, very happy with this result. And uh, yeah, if he calls, then I double him up and I lose a massive pot. But here we are. He ended up making the, I guess, correct decision, but good decision for me overall. He folds and I win the whole thing. The next hand is very, very tricky. The button raises things up to 300, and I'm in the straddle, and I make it 1500 with the premium ace king. My opponent ends up making the call, so we're going to a flop we go, which comes ace six deuce. As good as it gets for ace king here with top pair, top kicker, I would like to call this the nuts. Not technically the nuts, but 
good enough for me. I go with a very small bet of 400 bucks here. It's really hard for my opponent to have anything, or especially as the button. So trying to make it very, very friendly for him to float and make the call, and he does. He calls my friendly price of poker, and off to a turn we go, which is the five of diamonds. Brings in a backdoor flush brawl, a much more connected card here, and I decided to bump up the pressure with still a very good hand. Now I bet out 2,500. Now he could have more outs with a flush draw, with a maybe a pair or another better straight draw. There's a lot of things I can get value from. And for 2,500, he makes the call again. So definitely got the pot building here to the river we go, which comes a nine. For the most part, total brick. I don't think I lose to a whole lot, to be honest, but I do think it's pretty dicey to bet huge once again on the river. So there's a lot of two pair of combinations on the board and I've just got to try, I think, to be greedy, right? So I size up to $7,000 now, trying to get the maximum from an ace. Also, I think the 7K bet could seem a little bluffy from my opponent's perspective. And Steven is now in the tank and seems like he wants to call. He also seems like he wants to fold all at the same time. Definitely not a fun spot to be in. Can certainly sympathize with him considering I want to call all the time, but feels like it's bad. Anyways, in this spot, I just luckily have a good hand. So I'm praying for a call and he does end up putting chips in the middle, show the ace king and end up winning. It's always nice to get paid from a five. Although I can't feel super bad about Steven here. He just placed second in the main event this year. So I think he's going to be just fine being $7,000 less rich. Now we are moving on to one of the last hands of the night and probably one of the biggest hands of the night coming in here. Nick straddles to $100 again. And this time I decided to raise up my ace eight suited to 500 I get Andy to three bet me to 1500. Nick ends up making the call for 1500, and I have a suit ace. So, what's the worst that could happen? Let's gamble and call for a thousand dollars more. And oh my god, the gamble pays off all hearts on the flop. All hearts came out tonight. All of the hearts. If you can literally look at the screen, there are too many hearts on the screen. I check with the nuts. What a, what a great time to be sitting with the nuts. Andy throws out a big bet of 1700 Nick raises to 5 k And all this money going in while I'm sitting here with the best hand possible. What a dream spot to be in, honestly. I mean, what, what an incredible spot to be in. Anyways, what can I do? Uh, I think calling or raising here seems both equally very, very strong. So if I'm going to be strong, might as well just put more money in the middle. I 3 bet to 13000 And here, things get fun. Andy gets out of the way and folds his nothing. And Nick ends up making the call. So this might be a very, very big pot brewing here against someone who could be a little bit tilted. Uh, he stuck a good amount so far in this game. And... He hasn't been thinking clearly at all, so don't want to take advantage of that, but I mean, I just have a really good hand. Anyways, the turn is the 10 of diamonds. Very, very clean. It's not a board pair. It's not a heart. I go over all the options between a bet or check, and then I end up checking. In hindsight, I think this is a really bad move here because if I'm bluffing, then I should be betting here a lot because if I am bluffing, then I would be betting. And I'm bluffing more often than not a lot of the time. So I should, probably should bet when I have a good hand. But in game, I just thought maybe Nick could throw out a bet or something. But in game, he actually ends up wisely checking back his disguised flush that I did not know at the time. So now my plan goes out the window here. I think it's a very good check by Nick. We see the river, which is a clean five of diamonds. Just so lucky that the run out is good. No hearts, no board pair, no bad cards came out. And now it's time to do my own betting here. I didn't bet on the turn. Now I have to go for it on the river. And the question is how big? With about $32,000 into the middle, I decided to go massive because that makes sense, right? I throw out $55,000 into the middle and Nick basically snap calls. Of course, I have the nuts. I'm going to show my hand, show the winner. And it feels a little bit bad that I didn't get the entire stack, but I mean, how bad can you really feel when I play flush over flush and be able to get a massive, massive pot get pushed my way here? Anyways, I leave about $20,000 off the table, but it is what it is. I think Nick's check back in the turn was extremely well played and didn't allow him to get stacked. So as much as I won here, I still think I made a mistake on the turn, but like I said, I, how can you be too upset about that after scooping a $142,000 pot in what was supposed to be a very friendly 25-50 game, not very friendly as I scoop in 
been one of the largest pots of the entire night. And that's how I'm going to end the session. What an amazing end to the stream here. <sighs> what? What a what a session. Uh, I'm back home and just chilling, recapping after one of the more ridiculous sessions I've had in a while. Um, it seems like I find a way to run pretty good in specific moments um, while playing Hustler. It's pretty impressive. Uh, I don't know what to say, guys. Uh, I'm glad it all worked out because this was my last stream here at Hustler this week. And after selling a bunch of action for the past couple of the videos and live streams and not winning, it is good, it is good, it is good to cap it off with one of the biggest wins I've ever had, maybe? Yeah, probably one of the biggest wins I've ever had in cash. And um, it's just kind of absurd. I was in the game for $300,000 and cashed out for 477,000 flat. Uh, tipped off the rest and yeah. Um, flush over flush, crack aces with kings, just ran good the entire time, had aces full, uh, just such a sick, sick, sick spot. Um, thanks so much for watching this video. Big shout out to the 10%. Uh, I sold 10% on staking, so big shout out to if you were part of the 10% that made some money. Thank you for having faith. It's hard to have faith after the last couple sessions, but this time you were well rewarded and we all made some money. So um, yeah, big shout out to Stakings for making this happen. Big shout out to Hustler for letting me just continue to play and somehow giving me the sickest run so far when I when I show up on the stream. So um, yeah, here's to better, bigger, more things to come. I don't know how, but let's keep the sun run going. And thanks so much for watching the video. I'll see you guys next time. Hit that like button and subscribe if you're new to the channel because we're posting at least one video every single week, sometimes two. And sometimes they are incredible and big wins like this. So thanks so much for watching. Thanks for sticking in. See you next time. Peace.